doing a scripture for her. Yeah. So we can have our seats, please. So we are reading from John 4. We're reading from the message version, and it's John 4, 23 to 24. It's you who are the... Sorry, it's you, it's who you are, and the way you live that counts before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship him must do it out of the very being, their very being, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. Okay, I'll be able to just pray for you before we start. Um, yeah, just God, I ask you to, Father, to open our hearts up to what Abby is going to share this morning and help us to sort of get a greater, deeper glimpse of your spirit and um, how you work amongst us. I um, ask you to bless Abby and give her peace and joy as she speaks this morning. Amen. Thanks so much, Christy and Hannah, for reading the scripture for us. Uh, just using the message version today, but even if you've got a different version in your Bible, you can have a look, uh, John 4, 23 to 24. So we're carrying on with our Breath of Life series on the Holy Spirit, which is just so exciting. And I've absolutely loved the worship from the youth. I know they're out just now. Uh, it's just been brilliant um, just experiencing the Holy Spirit together this morning. Um, so I'll, I'll start by explaining, by explaining my llama. Because um, you'll be like, why has she got a llama sitting there? I was mentioning to Chris before this service. Uh, so when I was preparing for today, um, I was just trying to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and uh, I felt the word llama and I was really pleased actually because sometimes you could be like is that Holy Spirit is that me I was pretty sure that was the Holy Spirit um, and uh, it's lovely because God loves to have a sense of humor with us and that's something I'm learning in my relationship with him so it's also humorous but there so he said llama um, and I was like is that What's that about? So apparently, llamas are really bold. If you have a field and you have some sheep, apparently llamas are almost as good as a watchdog, it, which is hilarious. Um, and they will stamp on uh, like a fox or anything if it tries to come into the field. So uh, llamas are very bold. Um, so this is just a little reminder for the Holy Spirit speaking to me this morning to say, be bold. Uh, and I'm sharing that message with you as well. Um, Andy mentioned about being bold earlier. So be encouraged to be bold, uh, not because of who we are, but because of who he is uh, and the good news that we can find in him. So, uh, we're exploring how the Holy Spirit has come to encounter us in our deepest places as we worship him, as we follow him. Um, and that's that he wants to encourage us, that he wants to encounter us in the deepest part of our being. And he wants to transform us as well. So, looking at this scripture, the words that have stood out to me are that's the kind of people the Father is out looking for. When we come to worship, we may feel like we are the ones who are pursuing God. We are the ones who want to meet with him and we're, we're chasing after him and chasing after his spirit. And that is true. We love him and we are pursuing him. But in this scripture, we see he is pursuing us. He wants to have worshippers people who are in a loving encounter, a loving relationship with him. And um, that is just really, really important to remember that when we've come here this morning, he's pursuing us. His Holy Spirit is coming to meet with us. Um, it, it's not um, something that we have to uh, manifest or create. It's something where the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit is chasing after us. Um, and it's really important to remember that, that, that worship is a loving act. Um, it's coming really close to God. So God is looking for people who he can come close to. He, he wants to be close to us. And the Holy Spirit 
wants us to worship out of our very being, out of our spirits. So this diagram um, I find really helpful. It's from the late Dr. Larry Crabb, who was a Christian counselor. Um, and you'll see on the diagram all these different elements of how we've been made in the image of God. And the outside, we've got our body. And then the next circle is mind. And then our emotions and our spirit. I believe that we can come to worship and turn up with our bodies and we can stop there. We could just sing the words and we can go like this and it's not bad, but um, we could then go even further and actually think about the words that we're saying with our mind, with our intellect coming closer into this circle. But let's not stop there. Let's keep going into our emotions and our spirit. Let's be completely honest with the Lord. Let's open it up and say, this is how I'm feeling this morning. And, and let's let even our spirit be open to him because that's what the scripture is saying. Those who worship him must do it out of their very being, their true spirits and their true selves and adoration. Your spirit, not just surface level worship. I find that really good news that that's what God wants to do. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do, wants to come and to encounter us into the depths of our being. Um, the Holy Spirit's not looking for a surface level relationship with us. The Holy Spirit wants to encounter us really deeply. And the Holy Spirit wants to encounter us in our true selves. Their true spirits and their true selves in adoration. So not only a deep encounter, but a truthful one where all our masks of our false self are laid down and we are just who we are in God, who he has made us to be. Um, so another diagram. I'm going for the concentric circle diagrams today, it seems, but I um, find them really helpful. So this one is a diagram that Richard Rohr, Franciscan priest, um, uses as his teaching on YouTube. You can look it up, teaching on the false self and the true self. Um, and you've got the false self over here, and Richard Rohr talks about this being things like... Uh, our success and our body image and our career um, and, and all these things that are not necessarily bad in themselves, but they're not who we truly are. They're not authentically who we've been made to be in God. And they are, they are things on the outside. Um, and our true self is found in God. So just who you were when you came out of your mother's womb, your true self. And that's where God wants to meet with us. And that's where God wants us to worship from, our true self. He's, he doesn't mind if we've um, not been doing very well in our work that week. And he doesn't mind if we've not got all our jobs done. And he doesn't mind um, if we're successful or if we have any money or possessions. He just wants to meet with us. At the, big, at the very center, um, in our true selves. He doesn't want anything in between us, no masks. So moving on, I just wanted to say something about uh, worship music, because often when we worship, we come and we, we use song, we use music. Um, and we've got this quote by Martin Luther, which says, my heart, which is so full to overflowing, has often been solaced and refreshed by music when sick and weary. That's a beautiful quote. Um, maybe you've experienced that. Music is emotionally evocative. Um, it can reach us. And it's really special. And I, I believe that God has created music as like a language that he uses to, to reach these deep places. Um, 
an example of this is I've come into a worship service before when I was a, a teen and I, I was coming into church and I thought I had a handle and a bit of control on my on my emotions and my what was going on with me and I come into worship and uh, probably dad was leading um, oh no you never let go through the calm and through the storm oh no you never let go and I just go oh weep just start weeping because worship music can just really get there um, and, and I don't believe that's by mistake I believe that God has included song of songs and psalms because song and music is important to him and I just feel in my relationship with him that he does. He uses it like a language to, to communicate to my deepest places. Um, and so I, I believe it's really important in, in what we um, do in following Jesus, that we, that we have that in our relationship with him. We're moving on to my favorite part of um, what I've prepared. Uh, so... Perhaps you have read or watched the movie of The Shack. Can I get a raise of hands just so I know? Yeah, cool. So lots of you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read the book or watched the movie, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. So The Shack, and it's by Paul Young. Absolutely beautiful book um, and movie, but even better book. Uh, and Paul Young writes... Um, characters who represent the trinity so he writes the father as papa an african-american woman he writes jesus as a middle eastern craftsman and he writes the holy spirit as a character called sarayu um, which is actually a hindu name meaning moving wind so I'm going to just read a little excerpt um, from this. And in this part of the story, ah, sorry, I've missed out a bit. So Mac is the main character. And Mac has experienced heartbreaking trauma and loss. And he unexpectedly meets the Trinity face to face. So he meets these characters that Paul Young writes. So I'm going to read a little bit of an excerpt where Sarayu, the, the Holy Spirit's character, and Mac have been gardening. She turned to him. Mackenzie, you are such a delight. Thank you for all your hard work. I didn't do that much, really, he apologized. I mean, look at this mess. His gaze moved over the garden that surrounded them. But it really is beautiful and full of you, Sarayu. Even though it seems like lots of work still needs to be done, I feel strangely at home and comfortable here. The two looked at each other and grinned. Sarayu stepped toward him until she had invaded his personal space. And well, you should, Mackenzie, because this garden is your soul. This mess is you. Together, you and I, we have been working with a purpose in your heart. And it is wild and beautiful and perfectly in process. To you, it seems like mess. But to me, I see a perfect pattern emerging and growing and alive, a living fractal. The impact of her words almost crumbled all of Mac's reserve. He looked again at their garden, his garden, and it really was a mess, but incredible and wonderful at the same time. And beyond that, Papa was here, and Sarayu loved the mess. It was almost too much to comprehend, and once again, his carefully guarded emotions threatened to spill over. You can see why this is my favorite part. Um, it's just, just beautiful. Um, beautiful picture of the Holy Spirit moving in us and transforming us. Um, if you just remember that picture of us as our, our body and our mind and our emotions and our spirit as like a garden and the Holy Spirit moving and transforming us, um, especially in the most innermost parts of our being in worship and as we follow follow the Lord. And despite our mess and our imperfections, God has chosen for us to be temples of the Holy Spirit. Um, in the Old Testament, he um, chose a, a tent, a perf perfectly made tent, um, that he designed intricately. And that was where the Holy Spirit, and he came and dwelt. Um, 
But now we, our messiness, our imperfectness um, is where he chooses to come and dwell and encounter us. Baxter Kruger uh, wrote a book called The Shack Revisited, uh, where he looks at the theology and just picks apart a bit of um, Paul Young's writing and just explains how it really is this good news. Um, God really is that good and the Trinity really is that beautiful. Um, So this is a a little quote from, from his book and what he says about the Holy Spirit. In the life and death of Jesus, the Holy Spirit made his way into human pain and blindness. Inside our broken inner worlds, the Spirit works to reveal Jesus in us so we can meet Jesus himself in our own sin and shame. Begin to see what Jesus sees and know his Father with him. The Holy Spirit discloses Jesus to us so that we can know and experience Jesus' own relationship with his Father and be free to live in the Father's embrace with Jesus. What an amazing experience we can have with the Holy Spirit. The Father's out pursuing worshippers to be close to him. To encounter him. Just going to read that scripture once more before I sum up what I'm speaking about. So it's John 4, 23 to 24. It's who you are and the way you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship him must do it out of their very being, their true spirits, their true selves, in adoration. So the Holy Spirit is passionate about relationship. The Holy Spirit is pursuing us. God is pursuing us through his Holy Spirit. And we are called to worship from the depths of our being, from our spirits, not to be content with a surface level worship or relationship. And we're called to worship out of who we're really created to be, just completely, truly, authentically ourselves. No masks and no false pretenses. And the Holy Spirit is the gardener of our souls and comes and encounters us and transforms us as we worship and as we follow him. And he comes to encounter us in our pain and our brokenness to reveal Jesus to us so that we can be close to God inside the Father's embrace and the love of the Trinity. So my speaking part's actually finished, but I'm I'm quite glad because I would just love us to take time. Uh, The youth aren't back, so I think I'm just going to hop on the keys. I don't know if a soundie can just come and move a microphone over to the keys. Cool. So I'll just hop on the keys and we're just going to spend some time. Um, I just want to invite you to open up. If If you imagine your whole being as a garden, open up the gates to the Holy Spirit. So just completely surrender. Just as a sign team are, are doing that, I just, I'll share a quick story. Um, it happened at a worship evening uh, at the end of last year in winter. And this is a story of the Holy Spirit encountering me, my deepest part of being. Um, so... Shirley and Jan and Laura were leading some really beautiful worship and the Holy Spirit was just moving really tenderly and comfortingly, actually. Um, And I just felt my walls to start coming down and I just let the Holy Spirit in. And as I did so, I began to weep. And I was made aware of this wound, this open wound in myself. And... 
I saw a picture of my five-year-old self in our childhood living room, grasping hold of my childhood teddy bear, completely alone. And I know that that was a response out of losing my mum. Lots of you miss her too, uh, and Symes. And there was something about that wound that the Holy Spirit wanted to come into. And I just felt Jesus give me that picture of him in that room with me. And that was just amazing. And not only did I see it in my mind's eye, but I experienced his spirit and his light as well. And it was just, um, it it really impacted me and it was really important for my uh, journeying and continued healing um, as we move forward. Oh, brilliant, youth have just turned up. (laughs) You're just in time. I'm actually gonna let them do it then. So, (laughs) sorry, sound team. Um, You guys are in perfect timing. Welcome, welcome. Um, So they know they know about this. We're just going to take some time, and uh, they're already pros at leading us. Just in um, time where we're just sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing. So thanks so much, guys. Um, Right. So as they get set up, perhaps we could just start by posturing our bodies. So. I don't want you to do anything that you're super uncomfortable with, but you might like to kneel. You might like to put your hand down, have your, uh, sorry, head down, hands open. You might like to lie on the floor. You're just really welcome, but I just encourage you to posture yourselves ready to surrender to the Holy Spirit and, and let him in and, um, and what he wants to do in you today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you're pursuing us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you are here. We want to surrender to 